Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today we're doing a how-to video. We're doing a clean Windows 10 install on this Dell computer that I have previously done some videos on. Now, in the video description below will be two videos. The first will be how to find a deal on a computer like this. This computer total all up was $300. That includes the computer, upgraded hard drive, a solid state drive, which we'll be installing Windows on, and a gaming graphics card. Great deal for $300. The second video will be talking about why we're doing this machine, what the purpose is, and so on and so forth. Hopefully you came here from there, and if not, go watch those videos and come back here. But if you're interested in how to install Windows 10, that's what this video is. Now, I have got a Windows 10 USB stick plugged into the computer right in the front. We are booted to the USB memory stick. How to do that is different depending on what machine you have. Dell's, HP's, Lenovo's, Acer's all have a different key that makes it do that. Sometimes it'll do it automatically, sometimes you have to press F10 or F12 or F2. That's not something I can put into a video and just say, oh, this one solution will work all the time. The easiest way to find out what key will work is to Google search the name of your computer, how to boot USB thumb drive. And that usually should give you the information. Now, the very first screen that comes up is the one you're looking at there, booted to the USB drive. All you have to do is press enter to accept the defaults. Now, of course, if you need a different language, you'd pick a different language, but in this case, it's English. Press enter again to choose install now. Now, setup is starting. This is very straightforward. If you've never installed Windows before, if, if the idea of installing Windows from scratch sounds intimidating, it doesn't need to be. This uh, says activate Windows. Now, this might or might not come up depending on your situation. If you have previously installed Windows 10 on the, this specific computer, this won't come up if you're connected to the internet, which is what I am, because it recognizes the machine and won't ask again. If you had Windows 7 or Windows 8 installed on the computer, it also wouldn't ask because it would detect that and use that key. But since we have clean blank drives in here, it's asking. You have two choices at this point. You can enter your existing product key. In this case, there is a product key right on the top of the computer. This is a Windows 7 Home Premium product key, which Windows 10 will accept and activate, and we have Windows 10 forever. Or you can buy a key, and there's several different ways to do that, but that's a topic for another video. In this case, I'm going to click I don't have a product key because I don't want to try to read this upside down. And if you don't have your product key handy, you can use this to install Windows 10 for 30 days without being hassled about activating. You choose Windows 10 Pro or Windows 10 Home. In this case, I'm going to choose Windows 10 Home because the product key on this computer is a Windows 7 Home product key. And we'll hit Next. Now it comes up with license terms. Basically, you have to hit Accept. There's nothing else you can choose. Do we want to upgrade or do custom? Well, if you wanted to upgrade, likely you'd be doing the upgrade from within Windows. We want to do a custom since there's nothing on these drives. Now it's going to ask where to install it. I actually have some data on these drives. Um, if your drives are brand new and blank, you won't see anything here. If you do have existing data on the drives and you want to get rid of it all without worrying about what's on there, you just want to make it completely blank for Windows, here's how to do it. Select each of the partitions on the drive you want to clear off and then click delete. This partition might contain important files or applications, so on and so forth. If you delete this partition, any data stored on it will be lost. That's okay. And I'll choose the other one, partition one, and hit delete and hit okay. And now they say unallocated space. Again, your situation may be a little different depending on what drives you put in here. If you take a drive from maybe from a different computer and put it in here, or maybe, who knows? But once they say unallocated space, then we can choose the drive we want to install. There are two drives listed. The first one is 119.2 gigabytes. That's actually our 120 gigabyte solid state drive. The other drive is our one terabyte drive, which I mentioned in the previous video we're going to install Windows on the solid state drive. Hit next. And now it says copying files. At this point, 
it's just copying files from the USB memory stick to the SSD, then it will go through the installation process, and then it will do its rebooting process. This isn't very exciting um, because it's just a progress bar, so certainly there's no need to sit here and watch this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to trim the video here, and we'll be back when this is almost finished. And I thought I would cut right back in here. It isn't actually finished installing, but it just finished doing the copying, uh, getting files ready for installation, copying files. Now it's doing the installing features and installing updates, and now it's restarting. This will do it automatically. When this screen comes up, you need to take the USB thumb drive out if the computer is set to automatically boot from the USB stick, which in case, mine is. So take the USB thumb drive out, and it will automatically boot up and finish installing Windows 10. That was actually really quick. I thought it would take longer to do the uh, installing files part, but solid state drives make all the difference in the world. If you've ever watched my other videos where I sing the praises of an SSD, I mean it. I mean, it just, I, the difference is night and day. It takes, it takes an old computer and makes it like new again. It, it breathes new life and new performance into it. Getting devices, well, that was quick. Keep in mind, this is a five-year-old computer running the latest and greatest Windows 10 on four gigabytes of RAM and a relatively cheap SSD. This was, uh, I believe I paid $37 for this one. It is a, not, the brand doesn't matter because at this level they're all pretty similar, but this is a SanDisk, uh, what is this? This is a Z400S, I believe. That's in, yeah, that's a Z400S. Some other good brands at this price point. Uh, PNY is making some good drives these days. Um, SanDisk also has their SSD Plus, which is not bad. What else is good? OCZ is making a comeback now that they're owned by Toshiba. Their, uh, their, their drives um, now use Toshiba controllers, which if you get one of their new drives is fine. Now we're just waiting for it to do its thing. I said SSDs were fast. They are fast, they're not instant. The other thing it will probably do during install is uh, get critical updates. Now, if your computer is not connected to the internet, it won't do this. However, because I have this connected via the landline, the hardline, wired ethernet to the internet, it'll detect that and pull down, maybe pull down a couple of critical updates. Now, the version of Windows that was on here is actually a very current version. Microsoft is doing a great thing with Windows 10. If you made one of these last year, make a new one. This one is actually from April, so this is just about six weeks old, whereas Windows 10 came out in July of 2015. So if you have one from 2015, go ahead and download and make a new one of these. Get going fast really briefly. There's two ways to set up Windows 10, express settings or custom. If you go into custom, there's a number of things you can turn on and off. That is a video for another time. Basically, it has to do with privacy and telemetry settings. How much data is Microsoft going to send from Windows 10 back to their servers? Some of it is very innocent, such as uh, crash reporting information, buggy driver in information, um, how well Windows is running. Well. That stuff is fine because the more information Microsoft has about how Windows is running, the better they can make Windows. On the flip side, there is some stuff that gets sent home that maybe some people don't feel is as necessary, such as the websites you go to. But that has to do with browser protection and Windows provides protection against going to malicious websites with built-in malware and antivirus protection, but some of that doesn't work unless you let it talk to Microsoft servers. That's a video for another time. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and click the big use express settings down here. I will do a video in the future talking more about this. Some people care, some people don't. I personally use express settings on all my machines. I am well aware that it sends a huge amount of information to Microsoft. I'm not worried about it because frankly, Google and Apple both have way too much information about me anyway. This is the sign-in screen. Now, Windows 10, 
you can sign in two different ways. You can use a Microsoft account and sync to the cloud, or you can use a local account and not. I personally use a Microsoft account on all my machines because it lets OneDrive sync up easily, it lets all of my machines talk to each other, and it, it keeps settings across machines. It also lets you use certain features like Microsoft Family Safety. You can have multiple logins really easily. You can switch between the logins. You can control your children's settings if you have kids. I like it. Not everybody does. Because this is a test machine, I am going to be using a local account instead. Normally, you'd put your Microsoft account info there, but you're actually, I'm actually going to go down to skip this step. And if you want to use a local account, this is how you do it. Skip this step, and in this case, I'm just going to call this machine tech deals with no password. Just a moment. Hi. It says hello. We're happy you're here. Well, I'm happy you're here too. Lots of great features to get excited about. Now it's just doing the initial Windows 10 installation. This should not take very long. This would take much longer if it was on a hard drive. You'll hear me say that once or twice. I have to say that the, that the migration from hard drives to solid state drives is probably the single biggest great leap forward in computers in 20 years. Uh, it has been a very long time, maybe 10 years, maybe the jump to dual core processors, two core from single core during the Windows XP days, that was a big jump as well because that uh, no longer would one program just make your machine basically stop functioning. If you were doing something intensive, your computer would become completely unresponsive. With a two core chip, oftentimes one program would not freeze your whole machine. Look at that, we're already in Windows. How fast is that? Now, let me caution you. There's a number of things we need to do. The most important thing I'm going to do first is change the screen resolution because, oh, look at that. It did it automatic. I love Windows 10. It came up by default to, a, to an odd resolution, but it detected the monitors because we're plugged into digital. We're plugged into HDMI, high definition media interface. And here we are at 1080p. Now, technically, you can go ahead and start using your computer now. That was it. We've installed Windows 10. We're done. I mean, you put it in, turn it on, use whatever key needed to boot to your USB stick, or it might boot automatically to it, which is what this computer was set up to do. Press enter twice, pick the version of Windows we're doing, put in our product key or not, and let it do its thing. Pick the drive we're installing to, and then it copies files and reboots, and then we pick the Microsoft account we want to sign into or use a local account, and then we're done. In fact, if you look right down here, Windows is already starting to check for updates. It says, searching for display driver. Screen resolution, performance, and battery life may be reduced until a compatible driver has finished installing. What it's doing is it's because we're connected to the internet, it is already going out to the internet and checking for driver updates, checking because this is weeks old and we have a NVIDIA GTX graphics card in here and that's what it's out searching for right now. If all you wanted to do was see Windows being installed, we're done. Like the video if you like it, don't if you don't. Subscribe to my channel with the big red button down there, and if you're already subscribed, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, now's the time to do it because it's free and you'll get updates of future videos, including upcoming performance reviews on this machine. Comments, questions, thoughts, feedback, suggestion, that's what that section below the video is for. By all means, tell me what you think. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, do you want to see something different? You got to tell me or I don't know what you want. Side note, I'm going to go ahead and continue this because I want to do Windows Update first. Before you go and do anything with your computer, I highly suggest you run Windows Update first. I think it's very important that you do a first Windows Update. We'll hit Start. We'll go to Settings. We'll click Update and Security and click Check for Updates. You want to make sure that your version of Windows is fully up to date. And look at that, there's a bunch of updates to do. You don't want to go into a web browser and start typing in your email passwords and log into online banking. You don't want to do all that stuff until you've got, until you're sure that the computer is up to date. 
Now, another point, if you look at the very first update right there, if you can see it, it says definition update for Windows Defender. Windows 10 comes with an excellent antivirus and anti-malware program built in called Windows Defender. You no longer need, you can if you want to, but you no longer need to install a third-party antivirus program like Norton Antivirus or McAfee Antivirus or one of the others. You can, but I have found that that works just fine and it's quick and it doesn't slow your system down like frankly Norton has been known to do over the years. So that's what it's updating. It's updating the antivirus definitions. It's putting in a security update and then a cumulative update. The third one there, the cumulative update for Windows 10 is a whole series of patches that it's downloading. Even though it only looks like it's a few things, there may be 20 or 30 patches in that cumulative roll-up update that it's downloading. So we want to run Windows Update first, let it do this. It will almost certainly need a reboot, which is fine. Once it is finished rebooting and we're back into Windows, then you can go start using your computer, download your favorite web browser, or use Microsoft Edge. Uh, in this case, even though it will ultimately install a basic driver for our graphics card. We will go to NVIDIA.com and download the real latest drivers from NVIDIA directly for the video card that I put in here. The other thing is, because I put in a SanDisk SSD, uh, SanDisk also makes available a nice dashboard application. Just go to SanDisk's website and download it under Tools. Basically what it does is tells you the life of the drive, it tells you the performance of the drive, is it operating correctly, and so on and so forth. It's not necessary at all. Uh, Windows will manage the SSD. Windows 10 is SSD aware and will handle it. But if you're interested, most of the SSD manufacturers these days come with some type of dashboard program that will let you monitor the drive and check its firmware and stuff like that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.